Attention passengers. This is your co-pilot speaking. Your pilot is black mind, so you are not going blind and there is no power failure. You are merely experiencing the immense blackness of his proximity, and when you hear his voice, you and the cabin will get even darker than you are currently. We will be cruising at the speed equal to light, because the one other thing that travels equally fast is darkness. Your loved ones awaiting your arrival may not recognize you at first sight. This is normal. Simply tell them about the pilot, and they will understand. We will taxi to the wrong way now, so please buckle up and prepare for a high-speed departure. Thank you for choosing Jet Black Airways, where the phrase Jet Black is also a verb. We hope you keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Justice forever. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Some and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Uh, let me start by giving a shout out um, to Red Lion and S. Jock um, and uh, Gail at Knight for being the last of the uh, Cash App donors. I really appreciate that from the bottom of my black heart, from the depths of my black mind. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, the right Reverend Brother Bishop, Pastor Deacon, Dr. Hurricane Edward Allen Anderson of the New Greater Zion Valley, Precious Lamb, O oh Lord, hold my mule while I shout. Golden Monument of Hope Faith Tabernacle, Holy Bright Morning Star Temple of Being Up on Game and We Don't Simp Incorporated. For talking about this, he again got me thinking about something. I, look, Mr. Anderson, you, sir, are like a shot of black coffee with espresso. Well, no, yeah, you, you're like a cup of black coffee with a shot of espresso in it. Not only do you fuel my brain in the mornings when I'm waking up, it's nighttime over there for you, but you could also fuel the fleet of Jet Black Airways. So hats off to you. Um, shouts out to Base Muslim. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Shout out to B Deep and to Mr. Hausawi. Y'all know who y'all are? Shouts out to you, gentlemen. Yakuke. Um, and uh, anyway, um, I wanted to tell you all this about Amira and the background behind her attitudes. I don't even say this out of hatred for her. It's how she was taught, but I don't give her an excuse either. I don't fib a guff because F what your parents taught you when you're old enough to start looking at the religion itself and going by that and against what you, your parents and your community say when they're wrong. I had to do that with black folks. She's got to do this with the Arabs, especially the Lebanese from whom she comes. See, amongst the various nationalities of Arabic speakers, the Lebanese are known for really being westernized and sellouts and, you know, wanting Western acceptance, which means white acceptance. I think the youth may be trying to question that to a certain extent. I'm sure they are, especially in Lebanon, but she's not in Lebanon. She is of Lebanese extraction in the United States, in the diaspora, and changes happening in the homeland take a while to reach the diaspora. That's one of the reasons that Somali men raised in the West are going to Morocco and not going back to Somalia to find their wives. That's one of the reasons for it. See, we think that black folks are the only ones that have this, these divisions. In actuality, Somalis and other Africans are not the only ones who have divisions between the homeland and the diaspora. This is a common thing. Mexicans have it. The ones who are from Mexico have derogatory terms for the Chicanos and those who are raised in the States. Somalis um, have things they say about those who are born or raised in the diaspora. That's real. Daisies, Indians and Pakistanis have jokes about the FOB fresh off the boat because they're not quite as well adjusted to the West. So they have that too. This is a common thing. I want y'all to keep this in mind. 
But getting back to this context behind which I want y'all to understand, uh, or behind which sits behind Amira, that context behind her and her ideas, focus on this. Courtney Michelle was right about one thing and Amira dodged that. And I think she lied outright, but I don't have proof that she never heard this before. It's just unreasonable to believe that she never did. Courtney Michelle asked Amira point blank, what is this word you all call our people? It's something that means slave and Amira was, was just vacuous all of a sudden. She had to have known what that word is. The singular form is Abd and the plural form is Abid and that is something that they call black and only black people no matter what our nationalities are. They don't care. If you, if your ancestors went to the Middle East and they were free and they went in from Africa, they call you Abd because you're black. It's not because you're Nigerian. It's not because you're Fulani. It's not because you were kidnapped and detribalized. It doesn't, they don't fit a gut. Black Abd, that's what they say. And this is damn near standard across the board. There'll be a few pockets where they don't do that, but I don't know where they are yet. And I myself will give them the mother cuss word blues when they say that they don't even mean any sort of rank or hatred. They just got so used to it. So one man from my former students last semester raised his hand. And I told you about this guy that said, Mr. Mind, we, we, we aren't racist, but we see black as slave. And I said, OK, well, we're not racist, but we see Arab as terrorist. Do you see how racist it sounds when I say that? Yeah, it's the same thing. And the classmates laughed at him. They were backing me up and laughing at him like that was real stupid, man. Pretty much saying to him, dumbass. And the thing I always wanted to know was why is it that the worse their English is, the more stuck they are on these stupid ass ideas, too. And this is part of why it is that in this country, I do judge somebody's intelligence by how good they are in English. I absolutely do. I don't judge their natural intelligence, but I can tell how much they're willing to use it by how good they are in English. That's real. They don't have deep thought conversations a lot of times in Arabic. Can they? Of course they can. Will they? Well, the Bedouins absolutely will not. And others who follow the Bedouin culture because it's the majority won't do it. So when I tell you Arabs don't have their fit together, they don't. I know it. I'm, I'm living here and I'm seeing it. And I've never, I've never been to Lebanon, let alone live there. I know their reputation amongst other Arabs. But the other thing, too, is I actually know certain things from Lebanese that lived in the States and from other Lebanese I met that were Liberian citizens. Or they were not Liberian citizens. They got a bad reputation in Africa for doing certain things. They're just not hated, but they got a rep in Africa for doing certain things. And that's real. Fraud. Scamming. The first scammers coming out of Nigeria as far as, well, the first community to scam coming out of Nigeria, as far as any Nigerian knows, were the Lebanese. I'm not going to blame Amira for what they did over there. She had nothing to do with that. But what I am going to tell you is that she does not come from a country that even has a solid reputation amongst other Arabs. And I'm not conflating Arab with Muslim either. Arab and Muslim are two different things. Most, most of Lebanon is actually Arab Christian. A sizable percentage of uh, Palestine and um, there's a sizable minority in Palestine and Jordan of Christians. And Syria, I think, has a, a, a majority, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of them are um, Arab Christians. That does exist. They've always existed. But what I'm going to tell you all with no shame, though, is that when you were dealing with these um, when you're dealing with people that are of Arab origin, but they grew up in the U.S. especially. And you hear them say things like, well, you know, black people are more racist than whites. You know that they're full of ish because what they see is us reacting and they don't see that as a as a deserved reaction or a righteous reaction. But then they see they turn around and, and they see that whites will treat them a certain way and then they have a complaint. They don't like it, but at least they kind of understand because in their minds, there is a natural reason to discriminate against people darker than them. They think that there's something natural about that, like understandable. 
No, there's not anything natural about it. That's some satanic stuff. I get sick and tired of them um, with these ideas and with these inconsistencies in them. Indians have it too. Indians don't like it when the Brits or the Americans discriminate against them, but they turn around and discriminate against each other. Oh, they love trolling people. They troll everybody. They troll the Chinese even who are lighter than them. They troll other Indians that are darker than them. They troll the Southerners. They troll the Sri Lankans. They really troll the Bengalis. Absolutely. And then, of course, if you're black, they got a whole, whole, whole lot of trolling of you to do. But the minute you start rank, start going in on them, they got something to say about it. They're hurt if you're white and they're outraged if you're black and you diss them. In all honesty, I think they're an embarrassment to the Muslim Indians of South African citizenship. Because they get sick of, sick of stuff like this. They're trying to relate to people. And here comes somebody fresh off the boat looking just like them. But he, he he's like Gandhi. Well, we just, we, we just want to be treated like the whites, not like the Kafirs. What did you say? So in any case, with that being said, let me tell you all this. There's one other thing that's going on that Amira may not be fully aware of, but I know she she at least suspects this is going on. If she's not fully aware, she might be fully aware too. Middle Eastern women are beginning to check for brothers and we can't stop that. I can't turn that and I'm, I'm a black man and I can't turn that tide. I can't change it. Middle Eastern women are checking for brothers now. They want them some chocolate. It's both genuine interest and fetishization. It's all of it. They want them some of us. And the issue is that the elders amongst them are the ones that tend to block this. They tend to do this. And you know what? The funny thing is, sometimes these elder sisters and aunties that'll be trying to block the marriage of their little non-white relative to this black man will turn around and try to fornicate with that same black man later on. Ask me how I know. No, I didn't try to marry one of them. No, but none of them tried to fornicate with me. But they tried it with some others I know. They be making passes at brothers here that they don't make it at, at non, uh, non-black men. They be doing that. I know one brother was in the mall, lady walked up to him. He was on the phone with someone and um, he was telling, it was completely innocent in this conversation. He was telling someone, yeah, I have what you want. I think they were calling him about uh, something he was selling. He said, yeah, I have what you want. And she walked by and showed her figure, she opened up her body and showed her figure to him and said, you have what we want or you have what we need. Something like that. He told me about that. Just showing herself off. I'm like, what the F is wrong with these broads, man? Why don't you just politely wait for him to finish the conversation and then say, listen, would you be interested in talking to my dad and me at the same time? Do it politely. Damn. She could have had him permanently if that was the case. But sometimes they resort to trying to fornicate with brothers because they know that their parents ain't going to approve of the marriage. So they're just like, let me just go ahead and get this this sausage then since I can't get the marriage that I want. See, they see brothers here as being more masculine, more manly, you know what I mean, more romantic. The other thing, too, is it's funny because you got dudes out here that are booty bandits. Now, they're a minority. I'm sure they're a minority. But you got cats out here that resort to this sort of thing because they come from this old, backwards, ignorant idea that if, as long as you're pitching and not catching, you're still the man. Guess which kind of guys they, they predate upon the most? Really pale-skinned males. They go after them the most. I was unaware of this. I didn't realize that if you were really a pale-skinned Arab male growing up, you're going to have to fight some dudes off your booty. I was unaware of that. I found this out uh, yesterday. I know, right? Yesterday morning, you all's time. Yesterday uh, afternoon, my time. That's when I found out 
from a guy who spent more than half his life here. I said, cuss word, you got to be fitting me, man. It's like that. Now, see, stateside, I wouldn't have to fight dudes off my butt. I have to fight dudes from trying to pump me, stuff like that. Eventually, women were going to try that mess. Eventually, guys got the message, stopped trying it. Some women, they were never going to get that message. But here, the outside is like prison for some of them. Now, what this tells me is that the men and the women alike have certain stereotypical notions that we also have about masculinity and manliness and femininity. And so, therefore, these women are looking at brothers just like Western sisters look at dark skinned brothers with muscles and beards. They're looking at brothers in general that are in any kind of good shape. And they're like, this or this is a real man. That's how they are. And I'm looking at them like, you know what? Why don't you go and tell your dad what you want? It's your right. Go and tell your dad, look, I I choose to marry. I'm letting you meet him. If you come with some invalid reason to block this, I'm going to an imam or a sheikh. We don't have to rely on you. I know that's real, right? That's something going on here. That's true. I'm going to tell you all, though, that that Amira is one of those that because she's not a part of these changes amongst the youth back in the Middle East, because that's not where she lives. She's coming from an older mindset. um, And that is that why would you put this black blood in your bloodline, especially if you want to move forward in the world? And she's darn near said as much. She has talked at length about um, things like uh, why it is that there are many people that don't want to intermarry with us because our genes are so strong. And and that is true for a lot of people now. For the Like I said, for a lot of the young in today's world, it's not quite so much. But for a lot of the elders or the ones even middle-aged, yeah. And she's thinking with that mindset. Why would you do this to your bloodline? This is actually a very typical Arab thing to say amongst the elders. My students in Riyadh told me that their aunts and uncles would have conversations with them about this. Why would you damage the race marrying someone else? They have said things like it is disgusting to marry somebody from Asia. They've said stuff like this to my students and my students came and told me and I told them that's why I don't respect your elders. Even though I'm one of your elders, I don't respect a lot of my contemporaries because that's backwards and it's satanic. They might as well worship the devil, as far as I'm concerned. See, if they don't want to marry one of us, that's fine. But they don't want you. Okay, then when I turn around and I tell my kids, well, don't marry someone white or who calls themselves white, like white Latino or white Arab. Don't marry someone, you know, that, that just looks up to white and looks down on black. That would be, you know, the, the many of the Indians and the Pakistanis and the Persians and the Afghans, where well, they call themselves white too, and the Chinese. So, you know, when I say just avoid marrying somebody to avoid getting racist in-laws, and I'm called a racist, but they'll turn around and say the same goddamn thing because of our race, which makes them the racist. Amira is the example of why I tell my daughters, no non-black Arab men for you. If he's an Arabic speaker, fine, he has to be black. Yeah, I told my daughters this. Why I told my son, don't you go dipping the stick in milk. You don't want racist in-laws and don't go get you one of them white Arab women either or an Arab woman that calls herself white. You don't want to do that either because the in-laws, when you were gone, even if they like you, they're going to say something about your race. That's real. And if you conceive kids and you bring my grandkids over to them, they ain't going to treat them equally, even if they don't hate them. That's just how they are. Amira represents that even if she doesn't hate us, she does represent this wish to never to to not be us and this wish that that we wouldn't reproduce. She represents the wish and the hope that the world does not go back to being black like it was. I don't say this out of hatred, I say it because I witnessed it. And shouts out to Based Muslim. I can't remember if I actually um, shouted him out for what he was saying uh, about the uh, AFCON or not. 
because I've recorded this thing about three times and had to delete it for interruptions and things like that. So if I said that already in this version, sorry, I, I've had to erase three versions, but shouts out to Base Muslim for covering this. You got these ladies in North Africa, from North Africa, going to watch the cup. Um, and they were actually rocking with West Africa as best they could. Now, we are more than our dances and our music and our songs and drumming and stuff like that. But, the, but what I'm saying is that they were trying to rock with us. He covered that. A lot of African people don't really hate each other the way that we think. We've been taught that Africa is just this cesspool of internecine warfare and nobody likes each other. And it turns out that in actuality, a lot of them are pretty neutral towards each other. And many of the northerners are cool with us. Now, I don't think their attitudes are enough, especially the, the, the attitudes of the men. They are problematic. And again, some of the elder women amongst them, too. Like, why would you marry this black guy? But a lot of the younger Moroccan women, they want brothers. That's their type. A lot of y'all don't notice. Even 40-year-old ones, they want brothers, and that's their type. There's an idea amongst some Moroccan women that it is actually a better deed religiously to marry a black man than to marry a non-black man. I'm like, a better deed religiously? Because they view us as being less prone to try to seek acceptance from our enemies. Yeah, you heard me correctly. One of them was trying to marry a friend of mine, but he passed away. Yeah. I wanted you all to know about this. Amir does not represent the, the more recent changes uh, in the Middle East. She represents the old guard, the old mindset. And I do say this with no hatred, and without necessarily just being out to diss her, I'm just recording this to explain it to you, but I will say this too though, don't accept any excuses from her or others like her. She's been in this space long enough to know. Therefore, accept no excuses from her about why she entertains certain notions or why she died. I don't feel a guck. So anyway, I'm done with this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and upload edit and upload this, and then I'm going to edit and upload onto my Black Treon um, what I've already recorded um, about uh, how some of these sisters try to submit and they come up with this incomplete submission and how um, we actually have seen an example of this right in front of us. Most of us know about it. I'm just going to point it out to us. That's only for Black Treon and for Odyssey. If you choose to subscribe on Black Treon, it shouts out to my subscribers there. Um, that's better for you. If you decide that you only want some of the videos, then you can go to Odyssey and you can download them. But it's more economical for you to get on Black Um, But individual ones will be available, a paid, of course, but for download uh, on Odyssey, anywhere between uh, anywhere between two to five per download U.S. dollars. Um, that being said. Thank you all for listening. As always, I hope it helps. Black heart, black mind, black out. Assalamu alaikum, black heterosexual, non select male power because they don't like it. And black patriarchy until extinction of Judgment Day. Thank you for flying again with us here on Jet Black Airways, where jet black is a verb. Keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Gender, justice, forever.